They're a deeply committed, wise, politically astute, hardworking, and visionary group. You can see that sometimes we have fun, um, and sometimes the sparks fly at our board meetings. Our political affiliations and our views are quite varied. But what draws us together is a passion to work in the political arena to protect Maine's outstanding natural environment. Tonight, we have many MLCV board and advisory board members present, as well as board members from our sister organization, the Maine Conservation Voters Education Fund. The League is also very fortunate to have a highly talented staff. Maureen Druin, our executive director, is easy to recognize these days. <laughs> and if you don't know what I mean, you will in a minute. <laughs> Tracy Gregoire is our hardworking outreach coordinator. Tracy and Maureen are each on the cusp of beginning a family. They offer a powerful reminder of the future generations who will inherit the earth we leave behind. To me, this is both inspiring and sobering. Thinking about our generation's legacy brings real meaning to my environmental work, as I imagine it does for many, if not all of you. Before turning the program over to Maureen, I would just like to say a few, few words about the choices we each make. Every day, we decide where the food that we eat will come from. We decide the kind of car we'll drive or whether or not to drive at all, to walk or to take public transportation. We decide on the fuel source that heats our homes and what kind of light bulbs we use. And importantly, we also make choices about the political leaders that we elect. In planning this gathering, the Maine League made choices so this event would be as carbon neutral as possible. We asked the university to provide local foods, local cider, local beer, and wine. We're serving city water in a pitcher rather than in plastic bottles. <laughs> and a little later in the program, you'll hear about another significant way um, that we're working to make this carbon neutral. These are examples of voluntary choices. I'm a strong believer in the power of voluntary action, but when it comes to the enormity of global warming, voluntary choices are only part of the solution. We need new laws and new regulations, and we need more elected officials who will do what needs to be done to try to reverse the damage that we have caused. 2008 is a big election year, and we hope we can count on your support to help Maine elect more legislators who will make the environment a political priority. In closing, I would just like to make an observation about the people in this room, uh, many of whom I know, and some of whom I know by name, and some of whom are new to me. We have the collective ability to make a meaningful difference with the people right here in this room, especially with regard to climate change. And if there was ever an issue that could and should bring the environmental, the business, and the political communities together, climate change is it. Maine has a history of leading the nation. After all, our state motto is, dear ago, I lead. Let us take up this challenge with conviction, and let us do it soon. Maine made good progress in the last legislative session with passage of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, but there is so much more to be done. And on that note, I'd like to turn it over to Maureen. Thank you.